The New Zealand Alps in winter aren't usually where people like to go, but I enjoy the cold. I know of a glacier I've wanted to visit with the aim to capture a day to night time lapse. The moon is full at this time of year, and this timing came perfectly with Felden Shelter and Ford New Zealand asking me to break in their latest build. With the route marked, we set off. Meeting up with a friend of ours, Jamie, we head in to explore a valley that backs into the Southern Alps. With rain on the forecast up ahead, the swollen rivers make for slow navigation. A true first test of our gear at hand. The river soon cut us off from trekking any further, and we found a sheltered place to camp up and take in our first night's surroundings. Dawn. We awoke to a drizzly morning, ringing true to the tone of the weather reports. The air is heavy, damp and cold, reminding us that winter is still here and the climate is unpredictable. Deciding on a quick breakfast, we pack down our gear and head out to address our first hurdle. Just trying to work out where the weather's going to be good because it's just going to be rain everywhere. Rain and snow. It's not looking promising anywhere. How, what do you guys think we do in terms of dealing with weather? If we want to attempt a day to night time lapse, we're going to have to think about where the moon's going to be. So we've got five o'clock, there's the moon going to come up and it's going to set at six in the morning. So it is going to be up all night. We're also at 92% illumination, so we're almost at a full moon. So we're currently heading up to this lookout point that I know that looks like one of the glaciers. The weather, it looks like it might be playing a little bit in our favor with it a little bit of moody cloud around. Uh, the, the reports have been saying rain. This is essentially a backbone that runs up the side of the country and we mostly get hit with westerly weather. This backbone holds back all that westerly weather and this huge storm is currently building up on the west coast. It's just slowly bleeding over onto the east coast which is where we are. We're just sort of crossing our fingers. come down here and we've scoped this good spot up here where we're going to set up um, an A camera. We're starting to get the sky open up. Um, you know, we're starting to see mountains. Everything's starting to clear a little bit. So it's about 8.30 at night. The sun's gone down and I've still got this time lapse going. We're just going to keep running it into the night. Looks fully like daytime. Sick. Can't wait to eat at least. I really didn't think it was gonna like come out this good because of the weather. It's just been so overcast and rainy, but it just adds like this whole almost new dynamic with the clouds moving and then the moon coming out. Man, we really timed this well with the full moon. So cool how like the fog's sitting in sort of the valleys at the top of the glacier over there. You can just see it like slowly moving across. Near yeah, it moving.
With our goal achieved and a few more days up our sleeve, we decided to trek to some other close parts of the harsh, diverse New Zealand landscape, chasing the dry spells of the overhead weather system while passing through high country for the day. A collective decision found us hunting for a warm place to spend the night, seeking stable refuge from the storm that would pass through this evening. We know that it's leaving us with a clear few days to attempt moving up the long backcountry valley next on our list. We headed off to recharge gear and get a good night's rest, ready for what was to come. So we've just spent the night resetting all our gear um, after a pretty busy day. Starting to head up into this valley that we've been wanting to check out for a while. Just on the way and we've spotted this pretty cool road that leads a line towards the valley. So we're just gonna shoot a couple frames. We've got a friend of ours in the truck that we're gonna radio in and uh, send him on his way to get this photo. It's good to be back up in the high country after a pretty crazy 24 hours. Over the next few days, we're gonna try to get up to the base of the Southern Alps. And if we can get up there, it'd be awesome, but we might be faced with some challenges and we'll just have to play it by air, see how we go. We've got this nice river here with a, a big sort of mountain behind it. It really looks quite vast and um, really open through here. Uh, we have to cross this river anyway to meet up with the road. And I just thought, you know, it's quite shallow, it's quite safe. We'll just get a couple of shots of it doing a little bit of a river crossing. We had just come to a river. It doesn't look too deep, but we're just gonna we're just gonna walk it first to make sure that it's safe. If it's too deep, we're just not gonna risk it, and we'll probably head back. If it's not too deep and it's safe, we'll get over quite easy. We just need to double check to make sure that we're not doing anything too dodgy. <laughs> I'm not excited for this at all. My entire body is cold from that. So we're just lit up by the moon tonight. The weather's just fully opened up on us. The wind's dropped. We're running from pine lapses. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to take a photo of the truck. Hopefully get some stars. You'll see all the mountains. We'll use the moon to light it. Hopefully get something crazy. Let's do it.
I don't even think I brought my head torch out here. Yeah, I don't know. It's not quite what I was after. There's a big shadow being cast across the front of the truck. You lose a lot of like detail and what's happening on the side of the truck. This is unbelievable. I can pull focus on the reflection in the moon in the rear vision mirror on the side. There we go. Epic. Our perfect little campsite. Six. Ugh. Well, hopefully it's a good sunrise. And it was worth getting up. So I saw this spot last night. <laughs> it gets a good vantage point looking over the uh, the truck. So I'm going to get up there as the sun comes up. But this is essentially what it looks like outside. As I made my way up the steep scree slope, an inversion layer rolled in, blanketing the valley roof of cloud and taking away my sunrise opportunity. I opt to shoot our morning coffee ritual instead. <laughs> Hold on, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Oh my gosh, it's so strong. I need to do a small mouthful. Good coffee. <laughs> this time we pack up to the glorious view of the Alps, towering over us in the distance. Today's intention, to see how close we can get. Spending our morning slowly navigating deeper up the valley and without a single other soul in sight, we eventually came to the trail end and found the perfect place to take it in. I didn't think we'd get this high up. I was like, we're gonna get to that hut and uh, that's gonna be it and we'll have a cool view, but you know, we're pretty far away, but we're way in here now. After a row of long driving days, an afternoon off to enjoy where we are is welcome. I like to shoot film because it's good to keep my hand in uh, using a full manual camera and also the colours that you can get from film you can use um, for your digital grade so I like to shoot a range of film and digital when I'm out here. Now we're heading up to this glacier lake up the top. So it's a glacier lake that not many people get to see. So it could make for some good photos, something unique. Yeah, so it's not even marked. Looks like we could either go around that or we go through there and potentially get some pickups. Can't really beat getting up on foot working a little bit to get into these spots. I feel like you have a bit more of an appreciation for where you are, your surroundings, you can sort of take it in a bit more. Climbing the rough terrain, not knowing what to expect, we are finally rewarded with this untouched view. This is what we had come all this way for.